Why am I standing on this street? Because it's home to some of LA's most creative minds. What are we talking about today? Two of the most flipped watches on the market today. Sometimes when a product is so exceptional, its marketing department is hardly needed because nothing is stronger than word of mouth. But when a product is less than exceptional, its marketing department is sent into overtime. Having less to work with, they've got to create a lot of hype so the product gets out of the gates quickly. Two of the watch brands that fit the latter are the Tudor Black Bay and Jean Richard because they're two of the most flipped watches on the market. Tudor was relaunched in the US as recently as 2013 with the all new Black Bay. The Black Bay was heavily hyped and well received by the watch press and we ate it up. It was our way of saying screw you Rolex, $3,500 versus $9,000. The Tudor, it's finally a standalone watch. Everyone's reviews were terrific and everything we were watching and reading was positive. And we bought that Black Bay in droves. It even had a better box than a Rolex. We scored the deal of a lifetime. So why has the Tudor Black Bay become one of the most flipped watches in such a short period of time? If we could lease a watch the way we can lease a car, then the Tudor Black Bay would make the perfect lease. The short answer is, the Black Bay is a novelty, and all novelties wear off. I know a few people who are now trying to sell their Black Bay because they're sick and tired of feeling that they have to defend it against the comment it's a poor man's Rolex and one person especially feels really discouraged every time he hears that. He feels that he has to say no 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 but but but, but, but wait 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 this version has an in-house movement and for the price that he paid for it he feels that he shouldn't have to feel insecure about the watch and I understand that. Although if it was me, I, don't, I wouldn't feel the need to go around having to explain it because as long as I know what it is, unless it's part of a conversation. But like most people uh, who bought the Black Bay, they bought it because they liked the Rolex Submariner and they bought into the marketing where they're getting the deal of a lifetime. It's a great value watch. It's a third of the cost of a Rolex Submariner. But when that novelty wears off, so does their interest in the Black Bay because the Black Bay is not a Rolex Mariner and eventually they start to realize it. Sure, it's a great deal. It, we get a better box. We get it's a much better value. Everyone else seems to like it, but everyone, let's back that up because now everyone who liked it is now trying to flip that watch because it is not a Submariner. In my opinion and in the opinion of several others whom I know, the Tudor Black Bay is really an homage to the Rolex Submariner. And while I don't have anything against the Black Bay, I think there are three great alternatives in the same price range and class as the Black Bay to be considered. You can get a new Black Bay with the new in-house movement for $3,600. But as you can see here, you can get a pre-owned Black Bay for, on average, for about $2,700. So let's use that figure. Let's use a $2,700 amount. The first alternative to the Black Bay is Bremont's Supermarine. This one retails for about $4,700, but you can pick up a pre-owned one for about $2,500. I think this is a really nice looking watch. The second alternative is IWC's Aquatimer Reference 3536. This version ran from about 2004 to 2009 and retails for about $5,600, but you can pick up a pre-owned one for about $3,200. I really like this version. I think this is IWC's best looking aqua timer. The version I had and sold was sandwiched between this version and the current version. I'm thinking if I had this version, I might not have sold the aqua timer that I just had. And the third alternative is Omega's Planet Ocean. This one carries the highest retail, about $7,800, but you can pick up a pre-owned one for about $3,200. So now let's take a look if you're trying to flip the Tudor Black Bay. On Chrono 24 alone, you'd be up against about 500 competitors, and that's because there's around 500 Tudor Black Bays that's being listed. So let's put that into perspective. So the IWC Aquatimer has 12 listings and the Bremont Supermarine has 16 listings. So flipping your watch is not going to be easy because you're going to have a lot more competition. So in case you're thinking that you need an interim watch until one day you can save enough for that Rolex Mariner, well, 
flipping a watch is not going to be so easy. So hopefully these three watch alternatives and this information will make flipping your watch less of a nightmare and less challenging. The other watch that is being flipped a lot is this one, the Jean Richard. This is my uh, JR Aeroscope. And they're trying to, marketing wise, trying to put in the same sentence as the JR with, with this. This is my GP, the Gerard Perigo. And, and to me it doesn't make any sense to try to align these two watches just because they're owned by the same watch group. Um, which is true, they're both owned by SoWind. Um, but to me, that that comparison is sort of like a Lexus super sports car and comparing that or likening that to uh, another Toyota or an Acura NSX with another Honda. There isn't anything wrong with those other cars, but they're not the super sports car. Just to compare them because they're in the same family or financed by the same group, um, to me, it doesn't make it an effective marketing because they're just not realistic. Um, I would align the, this JR more closely with um, the Daniel Jean Richard. This was a watch a few years ago that carried a pretty hefty price tag, um, about $9,000 or $10,000. And that one's a lot closer to the GP in terms of price and, and quality wise. Um, but I think they were smart. I think they remarketed themselves into the Jean Richard because it, they, they brought it down to the entry level market. And I don't think the entry level market is any less competitive than the higher end market, but that's where this watch belongs in terms of price and quality wise because of the movement. Uh, the, the JR's movement uses a Solita 200 and that's what this one is. Uh, and the Solita is basically um, a clone of the ETA movement. And without going into a lot of detail, um, they were able to clone the ETA because some of the patents on the ETA expired. While we're seeing the JR as a watch that's being flipped right now, I think we're gonna start seeing less effort from people who are trying to flip this watch because the JR is an increasingly decreasing watch. And what I mean by that is the prices are dropping. So it might not be worth the efforts for people trying to flip the watch. For what they're going for, we might be able to get a couple hundred dollars for it, which is different from the Black Bay because there we're talking a couple thousand, three thousand dollar difference. Um, but going back to the Rolex comparison with the Black Bay, if we went the route of a pre-owned Submariner for maybe $5,000 or $5,500 versus what we were willing to pay for the Black Bay, we would already be halfway there. So if at all possible, my suggestion would be to save for the watch that you really want instead of settling for an homage watch or a, a watch that reminds you of a watch that you like because that might satisfy our needs right now. But in the end, we could have buyer's remorse and I've had that experience. And like everyone else, you don't want to try to be the one that's flipping the Tudor Black Bay. Instead, maybe save for the watch that you really want. Let me know your thoughts or experiences with flipping watches. And thanks for watching. I'll see you the next time.